Hi everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Cassie, also known as Knittycast. This is my YouTube channel where I talk about all the projects that I'm making, patterns that I'm drooling over, some family life on a small farm in Vermont, books I'm reading, and a spice of mental health. So first of all, I just want to say thank you to all my returning viewers. I really appreciate it and welcome to some of my new subscribers. Thank you so much. If you don't mind liking, sharing, and subscribing to kind of help boost my algorithm, I'd really appreciate it. And let's get started. Grab your favorite beverage. I, of course, have my Pepsi, so let's get started and have a little chat. So first of all, in typical Cassie fashion, I have absolutely no finished objects. Um, I've been working on some bigger projects and I honestly haven't had very much knitting time. I've just been really busy doing some gardening and some life things and working like a dog. So I do have some stuff to show you, mostly on one project, but it's not a whole lot of progress in all of my whipped areas. So for my first whip, it is in this beautiful basket that I got from Rhinebeck a few years ago. And it is one that you've been seeing for quite some time now. I do have some progress, but I don't think it's very much. Or maybe none at all. This is the Cozy Stripes Blanket. This is by Attic24. It is a crochet project. It is currently my only crochet project. And it looks like I took this little love note, which was a progress keeper from the corner of craft. I was part of her monthly progress keepers or knit markers for about a year, but it was a few years ago. And this was February's. And it looks like I moved it at our last podcast, which means I haven't done any progress. So I better make this more of a priority. It's a little hard to crochet on because you can't, it's not very portable because it's getting too big and it's kind of toasty when it's sitting on your lap. I'm also relatively new to crochet, so I have to look at it a little bit more than I would if I was doing a knit project. It is out of this really fun Lion Brand Mandala Cakes, and the colorway is Groot. It was originally given to me by my sister, and then I used up the, I think it was like a skein and a half. Um, so I used that up and bought some more, and I think this is the third ball that I'm working on. Another fun whip that I'm working on comes from the Operation Sock Drawer book. This is a book that I bought off of D-Stash a couple years ago. I bookmarked several patterns that I wanted to make for summer sock camp a couple years ago, and I think I only knit one pair. So I am currently knitting these pattern socks called Seidal by Cheryl Toy. And I've got a little glare here. They're really fun, super simple. You got some fun pattern at the top and then it's a really simple pattern going down. I'm still working on the pattern that's just below the cuff. I've got it in this really cute bag by So Crazy Crafter. So I'm part of a Yarnable subscription, which is, um, Skein of yarn once a month with some extras and the extras come in these little pouches and they're pretty heavy duty so I use them as a notions bag so I currently have this as my notions bag in this project I am knitting this one on magic loop I hardly ever use magic loop but I just had like a really strong hankering to try some magic loop this summer uh, you can't really see the pattern work yet because it just got started. So you can see it a little bit here. And I'm using some really fun stitch markers. This is a really cute gummy bear. This is a cassette tape that says best of the 90s. 
and these are by Jamie Taylor. Um, her business is Crazy Chicken Lady Creations. You can find her on Etsy. So I, it also came with a die. Oops. A lightning bolt, a heart. Sorry about the noise. And a peace sign. And this yarn is a really fun color. It's mostly baby blue with some splashes of like a purple pink. And this is by Hypnotic Yarn from their Yarnable subscription. This is their label. And this was March 24th colorway and it's called Here We Grow Again. I'm also working on a pair of vanilla socks. I'm gonna have to write the name of the bag maker down below. I think it's um, You So Pretty or You So Beautiful, but I will put it down below. Also from Etsy, it's this really cute canvas bag. Uh, it's got a little wristlet here and it's got the drawstring at the top. Super fun. So in here I have a pair of vanilla socks. The first one is down to the toe so I just have to kitchener the toe. And the second one I just finished the heel flap and ah, let's try this again. And the second one I just finished I just finished the heel flap. I guess that stitch marker doesn't want to hang out. And I'm working on the gusset decreases. This is some yarn from Stash. It's this really beautiful white with a bunch of rainbow colors in it and it's got a sparkle base. And the progress keeper that fell is this really cute sunflower. And I think this was gifted to me last year or the year before. And then I also was using this one, which I do not know the maker of. And this is a surfboard with a shark bite out of it that I bought a few years ago for Shark Week or for Sock Week. It is a play on Shark Week, but it is a make along by Nitty Natty. It is a challenge to knit one sock in eight days. I'm also making an emotional support chicken, which is a pattern from the Knitting Tree LA. It's pretty popular. I think it's kind of calming down a little bit, for, but for a while, everyone was making one. I'm using um, yarn from Stash and I haven't made any progress, so I didn't bring it to show today, but maybe next time. Which brings me to the whip that I am the most excited to share. So this is the VBAC T, and this is by Jamie Hoffman. It has been on my list of patterns I've been drooling over for quite some time, and I'm hoping to get it done in enough time to wear it for the summer. So it's got the V here that you can kind of see. I am doing what she calls the lower yoke, and I didn't put a progress keeper the last time I showed you. It was, I think, just past the collar or maybe still on the collar but um, I've made quite a bit of progress. I didn't bring anything to kind of put it on, but if I were to put the V in the front, I got quite a good, good amount done. I'm almost to the sleeve separation. I have about half an inch before I do the sleeve separation. And then uh, I think the next step is some short rows. This is yarn from Rumi and Roses. This is called Love and Roses. This is her ball band, Love and Roses. It is on Soft Rose Base 8515 Superwash Mer Super Merino Nylon, uh, 437 yards. I did finish one of the skeins already so I have at least 437 yards finished in here. I'm using these cute stitch stoppers that I got from a yarn store 
in Maine and it was called Knitwit Yarn Shop. It's actually the bag that I am using my project in. And then I'm using these really cute shark progress keepers. So I've got these little sharks here. These are by Wee Ones. She makes polymer clay. And what's really fun about her, she makes a set of four or five. And depending on if it's a set of four or a set of five, all except for one match identically. So like these are identical. And then she has one that's an oddball. And the one that's an oddball in this set is a hammerhead shark. And then I also have my beginning of round marker is this really cute shark head that I got for Sock Week a few years ago. So I have half an inch before I separate for the sleeves and then I have another inch or so before I start the next color. I'm doing the two color format. This is a pattern where you can do as many colors as you want. It's a really well written pattern that tells you based on how many colors you're using, when to start switching for the colors, and it has a really easy um, pattern for the color transition, which is super fun. Um, and the other things about the project is that she has, when you do a certain section like of increases, then she tells you how many stitches you'll have between each progress keeper for each size. Um, and it's got really nice, easy charts that are easy to read. So I just really enjoy how well this pattern is written and how easy it is to understand. If you buy the pattern, it's a lot of pages and it looks really overwhelming, but it's just because she puts so much detail into how to customize it and the different sizes and the charts that say how many stitches between each marker. So don't be intimidated. that's it for whips. So for the should have cast on already or a sco, I have the May and June dishcloth. It's already July. It's July 9th right now. And I was trying to knit a dishcloth every month so I can finish 12 dishcloths this month, <laughs> this year. Um, and I am being held accountable with my accountability partner, my friend, Sarah. And she's doing much better than me, but I haven't done May or June's dishcloth. I am following the Kitchen Sink Shop dishcloth club. It's not really a club because you don't have to pay for it. But if you sign up for her newsletter, the Kitchen, kitchen Sink Shop, then you will get a free dishcloth pattern at the beginning of every month. And so that's been my way of trying to motivate myself to keep up with the dishcloth and I am falling a little bit behind. But my friend Sarah said that a good way to kind of get caught up and not beat myself up, and I think this is what she's doing, is to start with the current month, which is July, and then if we have time, kind of go backward. Um, otherwise, we're just gonna feel completely behind, which makes you not really wanna pick up your knitting. Patterns that I'm drooling over, I don't always do this segment. I was really good about doing it for a long time, but right now I have two patterns that are really just screaming at me to cast them on. I will have to buy some yarn for them, which is part of why I'm hesitating. And the other part why I'm hesitating is that I'm really slow at garment knitting. Um, so they are tank tops that I would love to wear this summer, but I'm afraid if I cast on that it will take away from my V-back tee and then I'll have no summer top to wear this year. So not sure what I'm going to do about that, but they are the Summer Court Tank by Dragon Horde Designs. I'll put a picture up here for you. It's a really simple tank top. It's got a spaghetti strap. I may modify it to have a little bit of a thicker strap. I'm a bit of a busty lady, so the strap of my bra is um, not tiny and I can't go bra less. So I might make like a thicker strap on it or I might not. I don't mind spaghetti straps. So we'll find out. I won't know until I cast it on probably. And then it's got some really nice lace work on the bottom of the tank. I think that one would knit up pretty quickly. The second one that I'm drilling over is called the Staple Linen Top and this is by Hoagie Locatelli. 
This is also a really nice tank top. It's actually more of like a sleeveless shirt. It looks like a very simple pattern. Um, so I want to knit that one on as well. If I had to choose one, I'd prefer to do the staple linen top just because it's more of like a classy looking one. But if I wanted to finish one that I could finish really quick, I would choose the summer court tank because um, it looks like in general it have less stitches because of the way that the top straps are. So we'll see. Family life. Well, we are just enjoying summer. We actually have a summer this year, fingers crossed. Last year in Vermont we had like a hundred year flood is what they called it. Um, and it was just super devastating for a lot of people, a lot of land, a lot of farms, a lot of businesses. Um, it's taken a while for Vermont to kind of come back. There are some areas that are still not finished. There's some businesses that have decided, um, not to rebuild and, and fix and just kind of call it a loss and some that are still rebuilding. And the flood started at the beginning of July last year. And we've had a little bit of some heavy rainstorms already, so a little nervous. But in general, it's been really warm, super toasty, and wicked summery. So we have been swimming in my in-laws pool. We went and got some ice cream yesterday. We've just been playing outside, um, doing all the summery things. I'm working on a garden and my garden is actually growing this year. I didn't try a garden last year, thank goodness, it would have just been a waste, but I used to have a really nice garden and then every year that I tried, something would happen in life or I'd get discouraged and wasn't keeping up with it and therefore the garden just turned into a waste. But this year, I'm having a really great garden year. I've been able to stay on top of it and um, everything is growing. I'll probably put photos in here because I'm super, super proud. We harvested some lettuce last week harvested some broccoli a couple nights ago. I've got some beans started. I've never grown beans. And then I've got some pea pods. I've got a couple cucumbers. I got some tomatoes starting. And then I have this really weird tomato plant. Um, we went and got, I call them transplants. I don't know what, what they're really called, but we went to a greenhouse and got all these starter plants that had a really good start to put in my garden. Um, because I just wasn't sure if I was going to garden and didn't start my seeds inside like I normally do. So we went to the greenhouse, got things to put in the garden. I did end up having to grow from seed my zucchinis and my pea plants because I couldn't find any anywhere. So anyways, we got those. We got some good starts, got them in the garden. And there's one tomato plant called the hillbilly plant. And we got it mostly because it sounds funny. And that plant is giant, like tall wide and no tomatoes yet so i'm really curious to see what type of tomato it makes hmm what else has been going on uh, my son got a really nice deer over the winter and he um, paid the money to get a deer head for it and it's hanging on our wall it looks really nice so i'll also put a picture of that here uh, we went to a parade for the fourth of july we were unable to get to any fireworks this year, which um, is a bit of a bummer, but um, we still had a really great fourth. Anything else? We've been like busy, but like busy with simple things that aren't really exciting, which is completely fine. Um, my track record is when things get really exciting, it's usually exciting and not so great of a way. So I'm going to take this win and roll with the simple pleasures that everything is bringing me right now. No changes on the farm, uh, no changes or progress on my sock pattern, which I'm really hoping to get out soon. I was hoping to get it out like at the beginning of summer because it's kind of a summery pattern, but it's not really happening. And perhaps if it's not really going to be ready for the summer, I might hang on to it and release it next summer just so that the pattern can match like the season. Cause I think for me, I'm very season oriented in my patterns and I don't think I would want to knit a beach themed pattern, especially socks, like in the colder months. So we'll see what happens with that. <sighs> I 
I'm also like drooling over some stitch patterns and drawing up some doodles and just hoping to be a little more productive with pattern designing soon, which it's, it's kind of a pick or choose kind of situation. Like I can spend a lot of time designing or I can spend a lot of time making progress on the projects I want to make. I haven't found a very good balance yet. Um, so maybe at some point I'll find that balance. But I am in love with my VVAC tee and really want it soon. So I guarantee that's going to take priority. Since I have some more subscribers, last I checked, I was just shy of 200 again. Um, but I've been promising a giveaway soon. So we're just going to do a giveaway. So I want you to post down below what your favorite summer treat is. Um, I get really excited about like watermelon and uh, creamies, um, floats, you know, like a root beer float or even an orange float and like we do some pasta salad. That's not a treat, but like summery foods. So let me know what your favorite summer treat is down below and I will announce a winner on my next podcast. The prize will be a pattern of your choice from my patterns. All my patterns are sock patterns and, um, yeah, let me know. I'm curious to see what your favorite summer treats are. Okay, books that I'm reading. I am currently reading The Starless Crown by... I'll have to put the author down below. My book's all the way on the other side of the room. Starless Crown by author down below. It is a really well-written, um, like... I don't know if you'd call it sci-fi it's kind of sci-fi it's fantastical it's like a fantasy it's got a lot of different types of characters and different lands and there's a lot of storytelling and storytelling really well I'm really enjoying it when I put my book down for a couple days it's kind of hard to get back into it I have to kind of refresh myself just because it's got so much types of characters and types of places, but it's really well worth it. And it's really, really hard to put down when I'm reading it. So highly recommend so far. I'm also reading Hooked by Emily. Hooked by Emily McIntyre. This has got a decent plot right now, but it's mostly smut. So if it's, if you're not kind of a, a spicy book reader, it's not for you. I'm also reading The Big Dark Sky by Dean Koontz. I'm reading it on Audible. Um, not reading it a whole lot. Not as much as I should be. And then I also just finished The Housemaid, my to-be-read book list for quite some time. And um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. At first I was like, you know, it's not well written. It's kind of like so-so, like something's weird and you want to know what the like what's going on but it wasn't like it didn't seem sophisticated type of writing and then there's a part in the book where everything switches and the writing is so much better so I think maybe she got more excited about it um highly recommend it gets a little messed up um for some people it might be a little too dark I wouldn't say it's like trigger warning dark but it can be a little I don't know. There is some dark stuff in it. But I do recommend it. It was really good. Not sure I'll read the rest of the series. Um, the way that it left it kind of gives you a prequel into what some of the series will be. And I'm not sure I'm going to continue with that. But if you really enjoy The Housemaid, maybe those uh, sequels of sorts would be something that would be up your alley. Am I reading anything else? I don't think so. So that brings me to the mental health portion. So I like to do a spice of mental health at the end of my podcast. I'm a big advocate for talking about mental health, not being ashamed about it, and kind of ending the stigma by allowing free-flowing conversation and open, honest communication. So um, I had a couple of different ones that I wanted to do. But I read this one this morning. It was a post shared by another crafter called Knitting Tipsy. And it said that to, let's see if I can say it in the right way, 
when you wake up in the morning, like initially when you wake up in the morning, don't look at your alarm clock. Don't look at your phone. Don't worry about the things you have to do. Like take a few minutes just to breathe. Like just like take that few minutes of some quiet solitude and take some really good deep breaths to start your day before you start getting overwhelmed with all the things that are waiting for you. So I hope you can do that. That is going to be a little bit of a challenge for me, but I'm going to try it as well. And with that, I think that's all I have to share today. I hope you have some happy crafting and I will see you next time. Bye.